Hello everybody and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolor. Today is my 500th video. If I did the math right, might be hit or miss by one or two, but this will be my 500th video. Um, I've been debating what I wanted to do the video on and I figured I'd do a kind of talkative video talking about my experiences with art and my, um, I guess my artist statement as well as kind of a thank you to um, different people, and I'll mention that throughout. And also playing around with a very, very special piece of artwork, uh, art, art tool, and I'll introduce that in a second. Percy's climbing around, so I'm going to have Percy just come and say hi as well. Percy says hi. There you go. So, um, and now I have cat hair. Thank you, Percy. <laughs> Uh, such as the life of living with a cat. Um, all right, so let's first, I guess, start talking about this. Um, this is a box that my mother gave me that um, came from my grandmother. My grandmother passed away, I don't know the exact year, and I didn't want to text my mom and be like, what year did grandma pass away? Uh, so we're just going to say... 2006 2007 so my grandma passed away of um uh alzheimer's which is you know a really crappy disease and um you know it hit her really fast so it was like kind of a two-year thing and um she was you know very important in my life uh and i think from an art standpoint um Besides my mom, my grandma was very influential as a little kid with arts and crafts. Um, the holiday season is coming up, and she would always buy these little packets. These little, um, it'd have little poof balls with little googly eyes in it, etc. And we would um, do these crafts together where we would make Christmas ornaments or things to hang up. And, um, you know, as a little kid, those crafts, I think, were really important. And speaking of my grandma, one thing I automatically think of is, and Halloween coming up, is that me and my mom, when I was little, had made a collage on a cut-out piece of wood and it fitted together. It was different photographs of me and my uh, brother. I think we had Halloween costumes on. And that hung on the wall between the uh, kitchen and the dining room in my grandmother's house. So a lot of um, art memories associated with my grandma. And like I said, of course, my mom as well. So I think that was a big influence. Now this came from my grandma. This is, I don't know if Grumbacher or pastels are made anymore. I'm sure they, they are, but... This is pretty cool, how it's just old school 30 half length pastels. And you can refill for the set at your art materials your dealer. Oh, and they even have like specific fixatives that you can use. I don't even know if those fixatives still exist. Let's see. Breakage in no way affects the usability of pastels. <laughs> Some artists prefer to work with pieces in various sizes. That's so cool. There's an advertisement for the um, the spray. The fixative that really fixes. Look at that old advertisement. That's so cool. So, um, like I said, these came from my grandmother. And I got these, inherited these when I was in college. So about 2007. When she had passed away and I haven't really used them I've been reluctant to use them because of you know more the memory associated with them and I thought for the 500th video I would they um they traveled with me from New York down to my new home in Louisiana I um you know I shipped four boxes down to Louisiana whenever I moved down here and this was you know one of the items in one of the boxes so just kind of goes to show how important it was. Okay, 
So we'll play around with these and I'll talk about my art experiences and my kind of theory of art. So I mentioned as a little kid, and I don't know if this is gonna come out good, we're just gonna have fun. And we're using the black Stonehenge aqua watercolor paper. So as a little kid, I was exposed to uh, arts and crafts through my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother was um, very involved in the rug hooking. And my aunt who lived with my grandmother, um, she did stuff like that as well. And she made the, the blankets and the afghans. In my parents' house, there's at least two pieces that are framed and hanging up on the wall from my grandmother. My mom would uh, take me to the library and sign me up for different events um, that were geared towards kids. Um, whether it was a um, magician that would come do something like that or coming together and creating, I'm sorry, Percy keeps on digging into a bag or getting together at the library and um, maybe painting a flower pot to give as a gift. So there's that. I was in the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and there was a lot of crafts involved there. I remember one time we took a wooden um, dowel or a wooden piece, we drilled holes in the side and stuck uh, smaller dowels as kind of a mug holder. So there was a lot in that regard. In school as a little kid, one of my pieces was in the little art show. This was as a young kid and it was a collage piece cut out of a, a bear that was ice skating. And um, I remember us going to see that. I don't remember where they had it at, but we went there. Now, my dad is also very handy and very creative, and he had built furniture pieces at the house, or he had built other things, um, had painted things. My mat cutter that I got, I got from my dad, he had used that to frame a piece of um, art that he had gotten, or some, a few pieces of art. <clears throat> So there was a very crafty aspect to my family. I'm looking for what color I want for the background. Um, there's no uh, kind of light purple. Let's just use this, we'll have fun. So that was that. I do remember um, as well when I talked about school crafts and stuff. We had um, one lesson where we were learning about uh, two-point perspective and I was constantly just drawing things in two-point perspective and this was elementary school. Then I would say besides Boy Scouts and some activities there really wasn't much crafting taking place or art taking place. I would say that maybe um, I'm in my 30s, so that was school, hanging out with friends, reading books, uh, playing card games, Magic the Gathering, uh, things like that were really important to me at the time. And I do think about how the art was very cool. The artwork was very cool on those things. Um, a lot of reading and that consumed a lot of my time. So, just creating this scene while I'm in the lab. Then I went off to college and in college, I always been kind of like a little anxious, nervous person. I just, the way 
M. And um, I developed, you know, kind of like some stomach issues, some um, just nervousness issues. And the reason I bring that up is important because somebody I was talking to recently, uh, they are starting to have stomach issues and they're very, very upset. And I told them my story and that person seemed just very relieved that someone was willing to share their personal story with them. About 40% of adults have uh, potential stomach issues. So um, just kind of mentioning it and putting it out there for people that might be dealing with it, but since it's kind of a, um, like a faux pas, something that people don't usually talk about in, in polite society or anything like that, quote unquote, with stomach issues, it's just important to uh, mention that. Now, that being said, I turn to art for kind of a relaxation aspect uh, or just kind of to calm my mind. And I started with all things uh, with pastels. Um, my friend in the dorm had that. And very quickly, I went to the art supply store, which I think was Blick. On Long Island in New York, I think there was a Blick store. We must have had Michaels. I do remember going to a lot of craft stores as a little kid with my mom. But I think this one was a Blick store. And I was looking at oil paints. And I was like, well, screw it. I'm going to uh, just go ahead and get some oils. So I bought four tubes. Um, I bought ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and lemon yellow. No, cad yellow light and white. And I did a lot of paintings on panels with those. Uh, so a lot of panel paintings, um, well, the canvas boards. Then I signed up for art classes and I made some great friends within those art classes. I did my degrees in math and physics. I've mentioned that before, but I took a lot of art classes on the side. I did, I think just an initial introductory art class where we had all different mediums which was a lot of fun. I do recall doing a oil pastel piece. I think I preferred oil pastel to kind of dry pastel. You can see how just messy it is. Of a Cezanne, uh, the card players, which is hanging up in my bedroom at my parents' house. And my dad has re requested that piece, like he wants you know, to hold on to it. We also did pen and ink. We did ink washes. I think there were some value studies of still lives. And I do remember the professor saying one thing to me, uh, don't try to draw all the fabric. You know, just kind of get the idea of it. I don't think at the time it really made sense to me, but as I progressed in the art world, it makes more sense. I had this one professor that I took two or three times for life drawing and painting for oil painting classes. And he was really good. Chris Semerjeff. I believe he's still around. I've Googled his name and I've seen some stuff for him. Just trying to get the spelling of his name right whenever I Google it. Um, he would take our palette knife and kind of scrape directly onto the painting which sounds devastating and it was at first but it kind of taught you that to not baby your painting um to, to take those experimental leaps don't treat everything as a finished work of art like you just gotta learn 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 experiment and i think i had expressed 
interest in art to him. I mean, obviously, I was there as an art class, but I also expressed interest. But he knew what my major was, and he <laughs> encouraged me to stay within the fields of math and physics, which I'm very glad that I did, being able to get, you know, jobs within that. Um, and that's kind of like, pursue your dreams, but also have that fallback, where I'm 10 years into teaching now, and about 10, 20 years, I guess I can retire. And when I get retirement, hopefully by then my, my art is good enough where I can have potential job going with it. So that's been um, one of my kind of long-term life approaches where don't hesitate to get into art, but as well taking a long-term idea. Had a great professor for photography, black and white. I did photography in um, high school as well. We had a dark room. I think I took two classes, two years of um, dark room photography in high school. So that, that was an art aspect there. I wish I had taken um, advantage of that access to the dark room more. Uh, even in college, I did one or two classes in darkroom photography, and I really enjoyed it. And now I'm back into photography, where I don't have access to a darkroom, so I have to use darkroom changing bags, and um, I have to do alternative printing processes, so I don't have an enlarger. By the way, if you're watching this and you have old photo stuff, old cameras, film cameras, enlargers, and you're like, you know what? I should totally send that to Broussard. I would totally appreciate that. Let me know. Um, and that being said, if you ever want to uh, shoot me pictures to paint from or look at, I have some people that sent me some. It's uh, Andrew Broussard Watercolors at gmail.com. So it's just the channel name at gmail. Um, shoot me messages. We have a camel artist who comments a lot. And he had sent me links to his Pinterest. And he had just some awesome paintings up on there. But his Pinterest art name, I think, was different than um, his YouTube name. So if you're watching this whole thing, just comment your name. Uh, camel artist. Okay. So I mentioned the photography aspect. I mentioned that I had a great sculpt sculpting professor in college where he had some really interesting ideas and we had really interesting experiments. Um, one, we took the wire of different gauges and we had to make a model of a hand from it. And I made a very ghastly um, Nosferatu-esque hand that came out really good. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any pictures of that anywhere. But we did some other stuff. So, I also had a professor, I don't remember the name of the art class, and hopefully I pronounced his last name right, Grady, Garber, Grady, Grady, Professor Grady, I'm just going to call him that. Um, and it was a very, a, um, what's the best way to put it, very conceptual art, where conceptual art. I'm not a fan of, but he taught me to appreciate conceptual art, where each week he would give a different assignment, where it was something based off of just lines and depth, or building a little structure and placing it somewhere in the building, and how the locale of a piece of art and its surroundings affected the art and the surrounding. Um, just kind of stuff like that that just really just a great approach uh, very personal with the fellow I'm friends with him on Facebook and um, he just does such interesting artwork he has a photo series called incidental art where 
be able to take photographs of um, just places, just walls, just um, the ground, just something that just has interesting patterns. And that's just a great way to look at the world and to look and get inspired by art. So he was a huge influence. I believe that's all the art professors I had up in New York. When I moved down to Louisiana, I moved down here to, uh, because of the cost of living, uh, to being a teacher, the, um, the pay, the traffic on Long Island, I just wasn't a fan of those things. It just wasn't for me. And when I moved down here, I went to UL, University of Louisiana at Lafayette. And while I took my alternative teaching cl uh, certification classes, I started doing my, uh, so I continued with art. I signed up for painting classes and drawing classes. And I believe there was even a history of art class that I had took in there, which a history of art class is really interesting. I recommend either reading a book on it or watching a video on it, something like that, just to see how it just flows from one subject matter to another. I know that there is issues with um, uh, focus on art within Western culture, but if you expand it to just to beyond just Western, um, you also have the Asian arts in there and you also have the arts out of Africa, you can really round out and get a good inch, um, understanding of what's going on. The drawing class that I took at UL was one of the best classes I have ever taken, where in New York, we focused on application of color next to color and um, looking for it throughout. Within the, the drawing class, the charcoal class, and I've mentioned this, I think, a lot in the video, videos, where look for the texture and the movement and the wiping back and forth and helping create that 3D shape. And uh, my drawings weren't really good by any means, but I felt like I had learned just so much from that. And you could see he, he would show us before and after of people in that class and how good they did. Uh, you, they changed how they progressed. So it was just a really solid classic approach. So then I took a hiatus from art. Then I mentioned, I mentioned a lot about how my inclusion teacher because in my classes, I have some students who uh, receive special ed services and I'll have a teacher in there who will help assist and then later on in the afternoon reinforce um, and help those students. Try to get all the colors from here. Obviously, of course, <laughs> you don't want to like put every single color in a painting, but I'm just having fun and uh, talking. It's my 500th video. Just indulge me. <laughs> um, now, uh, so my inclusion teacher had talked about watercolor pencils and somehow that led to me getting into watercolor, Chinese watercolor. Then about two years ago, moved into Western watercolor. Chinese watercolor is very heavily influenced by Mr. Henry Lee of Blue Heron Arts on YouTube. This is where a lot of YouTube artists, uh, the thank yous will kind of come in. Um, then from there I went to Western Watercolor. Uh, David Usher, Alan Owen, Stephen Cronin, uh, Joe Menza, all of those people, very important uh, to me. Uh, Rick Sukowitz, that's that's how I'm going to try to pronounce it. I looked at it the other day. I was like, I got to make sure I know how to pronounce it next time I mention him. 
Now we can't get it again. Um, his barn painting videos really influential on me. Um, Stephen Cronin's approach to, to watercolor, that fast and loose um, Ron Ranton approach, very important. Um, books by Zoltan Sabo and James Fletcher Watson, very, very important. And then there's Stuart Davies, who I look at for oil painting, and then I carried that over into the Western watercolors. I got into oil painting again, and then from there, got into pen and ink again, and um, got into photography again. And I think before I get into my kind of artist statement, there's a few other things that I have to thank people for. My friends who were, first of all, very supportive of my art and I think saw that I needed an outlet of some sort. And that was very important, having that support. My friends that were older and supported in a financial sense, where I had worked on campus at... Um, Stony Brook had some jobs there and I'd spend all this time doing these paintings and then those paintings made their way into some of the um, people in the office their house or hanging it up in the office making it nice uh, Marlon was the uh, huge influence uh, Miss Kathy really supportive of my art and to this day they're still supportive of it so having that support from that aspect not I don't think selling art is necessary but for me I think it helped um, or at least helped <laughs> with art supplies so I could get more art supplies <laughs> as we all know the price of art supplies that's a, a big thing and of course, I mentioned my family. There's all the people that I mentioned online. And now um, there's the people locally where I try to give back and will donate paintings and pieces of art to charities for people to auction off. And of course, that gets my name out there. You know, there's like Mr. John with the... Um, Abbey players. There's Miss Harrington with them as well. There's my friend Rob uh, involved with the Rotary Club. Um, Miss Angie. All these people that I've donated to and that they've auctioned off my pieces has helped, I guess, in a sense, make me feel reaffirmed that what I'm doing people enjoy, but also is kind of helpful in a way. It's at the point where I do have people come up to me when I do a farmer's market and they say, oh, I have one of your pieces in my house. And I'm trying to remember all the people. And I remember some like, oh, you had gotten this one or this one. But it is to the point where, unfortunately, I'm not remembering at all. And I guess that leads to my artist statement now. One thing is that for me, art is obviously a lifelong endeavor where I'm going to continue creating art, hopefully until you know, the end of my life that I'll be continuing um, creating and exploring new things. I do want my art to be in people's houses. That's something that I, like at this point um, there was an artist in Abbeville who I believe I don't know if he's passed away but I know he was in a nursing home and he was the Abbeville artist and it's big shoes to fill but I kind of making that my goal to to fill those shoes to put my place 
in the town that I live in in there, if that if that makes sense. Do I want to be the artist of Louisiana? I don't know. Do I want to be nationally known? I don't know. But on the local level, I feel really tied to the town that I live in, the city that I live in, and that's the role that I would like to play. So I guess that's the, the public aspect. On the broader scale, I want to help encourage people to create art. Um, too many times as a teacher asks students what their hobbies are. And I know as a kid, my hobbies were playing video games, um, reading books. I enjoyed that. Uh, skateboarding, stuff like that, riding bikes. But unfortunately, a lot of kids, and I don't know if they answer this because they, they genuinely feel that way or if they just want to kind of take the attention off them when you ask this question. But a lot of kids will say that their hobbies are sleeping, that they enjoy just sleeping, playing on the phone. Um, and that might be an old fart of me saying that there's something not right there, but it's um, disconcerting. So one of my goals is to, you know, get people to find a hobby. It doesn't have to be watercolor. It doesn't have to be um, art of any form. It's just to find something that helps you with, with your getting through the day. Uh, we all need something. I've talked about powerlifting. We found that powerlifting is necessary, you know, and helpful for some kids. We've crafted, you know, great young men and women through powerlifting that have gone on to do great things. And they don't have to do powerlifting. They don't have to do a sport. But there's something better out there than just laying in bed doing nothing. So there's that. The teaching aspect of art, I really... I really truly enjoy it. I do enjoy these videos, the exploration, the uh, comments that people leave. When people follow along and post something online and either tag me on it or if I'm scrolling through, and there might not be a tag there, but they say Andrew Broussard, it really brightens up my day. Um, so I think that the approach that we take on this channel is pretty easy to follow. I don't know if this is so much an art statement or just kind of a um, talking about what goes on in my mind, but talking about what's going on in the mind, I'm thinking about do we do like a heavier green here? I really don't do pastels, so I'm wondering how do we get a heavier, thicker? Or do I work in reverse to add the darks on the side of it? But yeah, you know, um, I guess my art influences, um, something that I thought about that would be included is that landscapes are really important to me. Uh, still lives are too. I just uh, find that time-wise still lives don't make their way too much into the rota rotation. I like portraiture work, but I do find that portraiture stuff is, um, you really have to kind of focus on it for a while and really put a lot of time and um, practice into that, where it's kind of a uh, realm of its own. But that's, that's just my personal opinion on that. I used to paint very vibrant. Well, at first, because of those three colors that I had mentioned, plus white, that's what I had started with. And then as I branched out, I started painting muddier. And I like that dark, muddy aspect. 
Um, I would painted very heavily, very um, impasto, very expressionist. But I've come to more of a uh, tonalist style, which I really enjoy. And I've found that tonality and texture are really important to me as opposed to color. Where once I start really working with something with a lot of color, I really flounder. Um, but I really just enjoy uh, tones and texture. Creating imaginary scenes, creating a sense of depth. People say that they can get lost in one of my paintings. That's a, always a huge compliment. Influence-wise, I was very influenced by the Hudson River Valley movement and the the tonalists, the expressionists, the impressionists. Um, growing up in New York, I had the, uh, I was very fortunate, I was able to go to a lot of museums and see a lot of different exhibits. I believe one of the exhibits I had seen was a Bonard exhibit, which was really cool. And yeah, I think um, that kind of sums everything up, hopefully. If you made it this far in the video, how far, how long did I talk for? I talked for 37 minutes. I can give it, how long are TED Talks? Can I? <laughs> Welcome to my TED Talk. Thank you for um, dropping by. I hope you enjoyed this. And I hope it encourages you to find a hobby, to reflect on your life, what has influenced your life to be grateful for those um, things that have influenced it to help influence people that are out there that are kind of floundering and, and lost um, you know take part in, um, in your community or something that can help people around you out, you know, become a part in some way, shape or form. Um, and yeah, and of course, I feel remiss if I don't say, uh, you're always welcome to follow along with anything I do on any this channel. This is just an imaginary scene exploring, once again, these old, soft pastels the finest soft pastels from gumbacher which i inherited from my grandmother she must have really not used them that much but yeah you're like i said you're more than welcome to follow along with anything you do anything you do when you follow along oh she got it from macy's It'd be great if there was a date on here. I have to look it up. If anybody was familiar with these, let me know if you had any idea. If you've seen them before, and uh, you know, please like, subscribe, follow. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. Uh, here's to 500 more videos. If you want to support this channel, um, I have links down below. I also have um, ways you can purchase things from me. If there's anything you ever like, let me know. That note, thank you so much. And I'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.